So you spend 3,000 bucks on a super sweet carbon frame. You spent maybe 1,000 bucks on a really nice fork. You spent maybe $1,200 on some rad carbon wheels. Now, what's gonna attach all of this radness to the earth when you're riding? Well, that's pretty simple, it's your tires. A big thanks to my sponsors, Ibis Cycles, Camelback, PNW Components, Kitspo Cycling Apparel, Cali Protectives, Shimano, Fox, WTB, and Jensen USA. Any purchases at Jensen USA from the below links will directly help support my channel as well. Sometimes forgotten about between the allure of fresh, shiny new bike parts and rad riding destinations is simple bike setup. Tire pressure is one of those things that can be a difference between having a terrible day and simply being one with your bike and feeling the flow. Hi everyone, my name's Jeff Kendallweed and it's an honor to be hanging out with you today talking about bikes. So in a nutshell, my YouTube channel is all about growing the sport of mountain biking and I do that with a monthly video series where I go and visit a cool destination that has some really cool advocacy work going on to help grow our sport. In between those videos, we like to do some tech videos such as this one here. I've been riding mountain bikes for over 20 years. I went pro in 2005, so I don't have all the answers, but I do have quite a bit of experience. And this video is more oriented towards beginner or enthusiast level people than say my average video. As I was editing up my about me bio video, I've got that linked right up here, I started to think back to one of my first really nice bikes, my old Bontrager Privateer Comp. This is in around 1998 or so, and I'm running 1.9 tires on that bike. I came from a BMX racing background. I liked hitting dirt jumps, and in that sport, in BMX, we always went for 75 to 100 PSI in our tires. Now on my first real mountain bike, I kind of came into it with a similar perspective that more air would be more better, and so I always rode around with really high pressure in, that, in those really skinny tires. Now, as I think back to those days, I wish someone would have guided me a little bit to help me figure out what's a more reasonable tire pressure. I can pretty confidently say that proper tire pressure is 100% key to having a good time on your bike. What makes this all a little bit more interesting though, is that proper tire pressure is not the same thing for everyone, nor is it the same for every bike. Before we start getting into the specifics of tire pressure, you're gonna wanna figure out a really good tire gauge. I prefer a standalone gauge that just measures pressure. That means not one that's built into your pump because these are often much more consistent and you can keep them with you kind of when you're traveling, in your backpack, whatever, so that you've always got the same gauge so you can have a consistent experience. One of my favorites that I've been using for probably five or six years now is this guy right here. This is a Topeak Smart Gauge. Now it's digital, it uses a flat little battery. The battery can wear out. I've replaced this battery probably five times now. But the thing's pretty simple and it's so light, I'll often just leave it in my backpack when I'm traveling. Now, when I'm setting bikes up in the shop, I much prefer to use something more accurate and just more professional, and that would be this guy right here, an Accu Gauge. The Accu Gauge is very consistent. However, it's a hefty piece of tool. The thing weighs probably three times what the Topeak Gauge weighs. I have links to both of these gauges in the YouTube description below. Both those links go to Jensen USA. They're a great sponsor of mine. And if you have any questions about tire gauges, tire pressures, anything like that, you can always give them a phone call or you can email them, they'll help you out. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that everyone watching this video is running tubeless tires. It's 2019 and the most commonly accepted form of tubeless is now a tubeless compatible rim, some tubeless rim tape, a tubeless valve stem, and a system that uses some kind of a tire sealant inside. Inner tubes can definitely work, but there's a much more likely chance you're going to get a flat tire out on the trail and spending time on your knees with a mini pump is much less fun than sending sweet jumps and smashing rad root sections. Something that's happened over the last few years is that rims have gotten way wider. 
Now we used to be able to just grab a tire and squeeze it and that was a pretty good indicator if, if we had 25 PSI or 30 PSI because you could kind of tell pretty quickly. Now as rims got wider, the sidewalls of the tires got more vertical which meant they were a lot stiffer. This means that once you kind of get over say 30 millimeters or so of inner rim width, you can't really rely on the old squeeze test like you used to be able to. Nobody wants to experience a tire blowing off the rim, so never exceed the recommended maximum tire pressure stated on your rim or on your tire. I'm looking at you guys. If you're running a non-tubeless compatible tire and rim, your biggest risk is gonna be the tire exploding off the rim with a big impact, and that can be really dangerous. A pressure that's too high will have a loss in rolling efficiency because you're simply gonna be bouncing along the terrain instead of conforming to it and absorbing some of those bumps. Anytime you get bumped up off the ground, you actually lost some control and you're losing speed that way. Now, the other thing you wanna avoid is running a tire pressure that's too low. When your tire pressure is too low, you run the risk of tearing the tire between the tread while braking through sharp pointy objects. But for me, the even scarier thing is having your tire unexpectedly burp. I've had tires burp plenty of times on hard cornering instances, but what really scares the daylights out of me is when I'm going off the takeoff of a jump that has a steep lip and the tire literally burps air going off the face of that jump. The other really scary moment is when you overclear a jump and you land maybe just a hair sideways. That will pretty often result in a burp if you don't have enough air in that tire. I'd actually recommend setting up tire pressure kind of like you would suspension pressure. I wouldn't just use one pressure for all places all the time. That has never worked for me and that's a big part of why I bought this gauge in the first place. What works really well is to find a repeatable circuit that you can pedal a few laps on. And what you want to do is, similar to suspension setup, figure out a good base point, kind of a firm tire pressure, and then you're going to let air out until it's a little bit too soft and then you're going to go back in a little bit. Now, is a 2 PSI increment too minute? Probably. But if you're on a big wide 2.6 or 2.8 tire, a 2 PSI increment could make a lot of sense. Lately I've been running 2.4 and 2.5 size tires and I'm using pressures in the mid 20s. As you ride this repeatable circuit, what you want to do is make sure you're getting plenty of tire squish but not bottoming it out to the rim. You'll be able to feel a rim strike in your handlebars pretty quickly. You'll also feel the tire fold over unexpected. That's something you do not want to have happen. I would say air down until you experience one or the other and then consider going back up two or four PSI to find a good baseline pressure. Over the last two years alone, I've ridden everything from 3.0 size tires down to 2.25 size tires. As a result, I've found my tire pressures have differed a ton between the various sizes. They also change depending on where I'm riding. I've been getting by really well running a 22 PSI in front and a 24 PSI in rear on my Ripmo, which is a 29er. And on my HD4, I like to run about 24 PSI in front and 26 PSI in the back. Here in the Pacific Northwest, it's a pretty easy world for tires. There's nowhere near as many sharp pointy rocks as you'd find out in the desert, say in Southern California or in the Southwest USA. And there's a lot more traction than what you would find, say, out on the East Coast with the wet limestone. For whatever reason, I found that as you go up to the 29 inch wheel size, you can go down a little bit in tire pressure without as many adverse effects. Now, one thing that's key to remember is that as you go to different tire casing types, something more heavy duty and durable versus something lighter and more flimsy, you're gonna have to adjust your tire pressure accordingly. I'm sponsored by WTB and I use the tough casing tires almost exclusively. There are two layers of rubber in there and they're really stiff. Now on the WTB light casing tires, I have to run quite a bit more air pressure to keep the tire from folding over. In the Maxxis world, this would be like a double down versus an EXO style casing. Schwalbe also has similar different types of tire casings. So let's talk about the different tire sizes. Well, I was riding 2.6 size tires over the summertime, and that was a little bit harder to set up in terms of tire pressure than what I was expecting. I thought I was gonna need to use closer to 18, 20 PSI, and on the 27.5 bike with those big thick WTB tires, I was actually running 16 and 18 PSI with decently good results. 
Now when I ran that same pressure on the Ibis DV9 hardtail using the Schwalbe tires, I was actually burping the tires pretty often, even off the face of straight jumps. That was enough force they would burp for me, and that was really scary. I think I ended up going to an 18-20 PSI combo on that bike, but if you remember earlier in this video, I said on 29ers I usually go down in pressure. So I found that very interesting. Let's go down memory lane just a little bit. Back in early 2017, I was out in Hurricane, Utah, filming uh, the Escape to Hurricane edit, and I was using WTB Ranger 2.8 size tires in that. Those are plus size tires. Well, at the Rampage course, I wasn't hitting anything massive, but I was hitting enough drops that the usual 15 to 18 PSI was not enough, and I was bottoming tire to rim just off a lot of the drops. I ended up around 27 PSI in front and closer to 30 PSI in the rear. I have never since ran that high of a pressure in a plus size tire, but it worked for that day. Something that I don't have personal experience with yet, but I plan on testing soon, is this right here. Cushcore is a tire insert system. Now this takes up quite a bit of volume inside your tire, making things more progressive. I'm really curious how this affects the tire pressures that I end up riding. As soon as I have some feedback for this, I'll do my best to share it with everyone here. If there's anything I could tell my little 13 year old self back in 1998, it would be to get a good tire gauge, keep it in the backpack and use it. Once again, I've got links to both of those rad gauges in the description below. I've also got links to the necessary stuff to set your bike up tubeless, including tubeless sealant, rim tape, and valve stems. All those links go to Jensen USA, a great sponsor of mine. If you have any questions for me about my tire setup, drop me a note below, and I'll see you guys on the trail. Let it go. Let it go.